nitric acid and TNT was born. By the way, TNT, nitric acid was the one which gave birth to stainless steel which we use in every home today. But stainless steel was created specifically to take care of handling dilute nitric acid. Now how to make nitric acid when you don't have a source of nitrate? Because major source of nitrate in the world is chili and that was denied. So ammonia oxidation to NO and conversion to NO2 scrubbing in water to make nitric acid became a very major breakthrough. Why? Because platinum rhodium gauss catalyst, first time in history of the world, a gauss catalyst was used, not palletted catalyst. And ammonia reacts with oxygen with a contact time of a millisecond, 001 second. And you get 95% plus selectivity because ammonia was burnt to give you nitrogen and water. Others like me, you lose the job. Because you run a nitric acid plant and ammonia must be converted to NO with 95% plus, plus efficiency. What is not generally known that nitric acid was born before synthetic ammonia. And the source of ammonia was byproduct ammonium sulfate in cocoa and grounds. And since the Vice Chancellor comes from Pune, high explosive factory Karki was our first unit to make TNT. And they used to make ammonia from this ammonium sulfate from cocoa ovens, imported as well as domestic, and react with lime, ammonia is produced, and that ammonia was converted to NO and nitric acid was made in India. Also, then Hauer altered the scene. Hauer got Nobel Prize for his work on ammonia. If you want me to name two or three major breakthroughs in the history of chemistry leading to chemical industry, I would rate ammonia synthesis as the most outstanding. And I explain to you what aspects of chemical sciences have gone into into this. First of all, if nitrogen reacts with hydrogen thermodynamically, nothing else will be formed under the ammonia because you can't get hydrazine or hydrazoic acid thermodynamically impossible. So N2 plus hydrazine you can get only ammonia. <coughs> Unfortunately, there is no catalyst which works at low temperature. So the minimum temperature is 350 degrees plus, typically 450 degrees. At that level, thermodynamics is very unfavorable. So you combat that by using principles of thermodynamics by going to higher and higher pressures. In that time, however, went to pressures even as high as thousand bar. He was a physical chemist. And he studied 5,000 catalysts to arrive at a catalyst which is still out of the day from 1910s to 2010. Some improvements have been made, but the basic structure of the catalyst has been the same as what happened. Not only that, for the students of physical chemistry, he cranked out the thermodynamics from experimental data. He made sure that during conversion equilibrium was established. And for the first time in history of sciences, chemical sciences and chemical industry, it was shown that how non-ideal behavior of nitrogen and hydrogen at that pressure, fortunately in this case, gives much higher conversion than if the system was ideal. So, the role of non-ideality. The purpose of mentioning this to you is when we study something, there is some goal we have in mind, but there are spin-offs which are quite different. So, this ammonia synthesis in the First World War gave power to the, uh, the, the, the varying groups of a kind which was unprecedented. Now, I take you to 1930. I am just giving you major milestones. At that time, all ethylene oxide was made by ethylene chlorohydrin process. Again, you would have learned in your college chemistry. <coughs> chlorine plus water plus ethylene will give you chlorohydrin. And you react that with lime or caustic soda, you will get ethylene oxide. Mind you, it is an oxygen ring. Imagine how a linear molecule is converted into a Heterocyclic compound. Now, this is a polluting process. And we had a major breakthrough at that time that you could use a silver catalyst to convert ethylene to ethylene oxide by vapor phase oxidation. You know how critical is ethylene oxide today. Because ethylene oxide gives you ethylene glycol. Anything glycol gives you 0.5% 
polyester fiber, polyester resin, and most of you would have polyester cotton blends. You will find if there is a sari revolution in India, it is all because of polyester. The poorest of the person can afford a polyester uh, sari, polyester for common man, for common person. Glycol is supra pure. <coughs> Neat, ethylene glycol is supra purity, better than an to reagent grain, just as triphenic acid which is required to make polyester should be also of such an extraordinary quality that you will talk of aldehyde content at parts per million. Therefore, we have for the first time in the history of chemical industry, a chemical in its own nomenclature, the word purified is added, PTA, purified triphthalic acid, whose technology itself was most fascinating because paradigm was originally converted to triphthalic acid by nitric acid oxidation. And in such processes, you can't help it, but you get N2O. And N2O is very bad from climate point of view. Today, it is all done by air oxidation in acetic acid medium, where PTA crystallizes out. Then you dissolve PTA in water at temperature like 270 degrees centigrade, corresponding pressure, and hydrogenate all the aldehyde impurities to vanishing levels. When I say vanishing levels, I'm talking of levels well under 5 parts per million. So, this breakthrough of converting a very polluting process to a very clean process. Now, what have been advances to tell you that no technology is ever mature? This conversion in relation to theory, selectivity was only 60%. Today, we have 86% selectivity for ethylene to ethylene oxide. In course of time, this was also adopted for protein oxide. But because protein oxidation goes more elevated and you get acrolein and acrolein is converted to acrylic acid and you see this acrylic acid in everyday life you may or may not recognize this but one of the major impact of a product from chemical industry quality of life has been diaper and sanitary napkins and these super absorbent polymers are all based on acrylic acid acrylic acid esters and acrylic acid, one could do from protein by allylic oxidation to acrolein, followed by another catalyst to give you acrylic acid, which was all done earlier by using HCN with acetylene or SCN with ethylene oxide. And how clean is this process? Just as, as I'll tell you, I won't jump, but ahead of time I want to tell you that in early 1960, a major breakthrough came for propylene to go to acrylonitrile and otherwise acrylonitrile was all made from ethylene oxide, SCN, acetaldehyde, SCN and one could take propylene plus ammonia and go directly to acrylonitrile. Those of you who are interested in the science part of it should ponder how do you get it? And you find very fascinating things as to how spectroscopic analysis of the phenomenon of wonderful catalysis has played a big role. I go back, told you ethylene oxide, which then got adopted for propylene oxide. I now come to second law, because that was the most productive part of how wonderful chemistry was converted to bulk chemicals. So I first named rubber. You can't fight a war without rubber, because no vehicle will be mobile. Our mobility is entirely because of chemical industry, whether it's bicycle, whether it's scooter, car, aeroplane. No aircraft with all the things, if the tires don't work, aircraft will come to a grinding halt. Now, natural rubber was grown only in tropics. So, Allied powers did not have access, and you can't fight a war without. So, synthetic rubber had to be produced because natural rubber wasn't available. And during the Second War time, every conceivable technology was exploited to make butadiene and styrene, to make styrene butadiene rubber. Many other rubbers. But what people have forgotten, that one of the greatest inventors in the history of chemical industry, Peruthers in DuPont, who was originally a Harvard professor, and he was lured by DuPont to come and do something very original. And in the high molecular weight uh, materials, polymers. And his first breakthrough was in making neoprene rubber, polychloroprene rubber. This was 